Hello there everyone. I know I posted guides on how to gear up quickly, but I never actually explained exactly how to gear up on what you need step by step. I noticed a few people stuck after they reached level 88 and have the time gear that was given at the beginning when creating a character. I want to go through this and I really hope this helps you and if you have any questions just let me know down below. This is coming from my knowledge so I may be missing some information in the video forgotten to mention or something that I may not know about so this video is based on everything that I know that can be helpful to you. Leveling up to 88 Now with this subject I'm sure you know what the number for level cap is which is level 88. Here's something that I need to tell you. If you just started in the game, the best decision to do is story quest. Gearing up in the future will require lots of credits and materials. If you played Elsword, the story quest wouldn't even matter as much. Now, if you actually don't know what Elsword is, basically what I'm trying to say is, these quests are much more useful. These quests give materials, boosters, which can be used to upgrade gear, which is extremely useful. Now what if you don't want to spend so much time on leveling and just want to level up to 88 as quick as possible? Well, if you're gonna go alone with nobody to help you, then I suggest using gear that you dropped from the last dungeon you run in each hub. If you don't really understand what I mean, basically when you complete the last dungeon on the map from the hub world, it's best to use the gear that was dropped there, so you can progress smoothly through other dungeons. Now what if you actually don't know how to level up quickly? Here are some things that you need to know. When completing other dungeons, you must do the last dungeon that is in the hub world. It'll give you more XP with the higher the dungeon is. Now when you create your character, you'll be given boxes when completing the first few quests in the game. Those must be completed in order to earn goodies. The most important box is actually something called New Recruit all in one briefcase. There's something that you need to keep note of. There is an item in this box that gives you 50% XP. I suggest using that around maybe level 60 or higher due to it only handling you 50 of them. Leveling benefits also include special operation support. This gives you 15% XP bonus and lasts for an entire day. The days can be stacked, but not the XP or the other benefits that comes with it. Extreme Fighter, which lasts for about 6 hours and is used throughout the entire account, it can only be used once per day. Extreme Fighter can only be earned in Planar Gate, and you would need to unlock that area at level 50 or higher. There are different teams, which are Black Lambs, Wolf Dogs, Wild Hunter, and Radish. In the beginning for Black Lambs and Wolf Dogs, their storyline and hub worlds are basically the same. Some small different things like maybe scenery and music. But it's still the same place. I mention this because one, you won't be able to level with someone unless you're in the same team, excluding the other teams I mentioned earlier. You can go together with Black Lambs and Wolf Dog members together. Now here's the other thing. With those two teams, you must do the beginning quest up until episode 4, Shop Until You Drop, which is unlocking the black market. The NPC named Ken, you can search items here that you can buy from ranging from costumes, materials, and more. For the new characters in the game, which is referring to the Radis team, they must do the main story or else you won't get promoted. Gearing up in the beginning. In the start, early gear can be acquired from the box that I mentioned from doing first quest. This gear that they give would be three of the same ones but different types, which are physical, magical and hybrid boxes. If you want to know what type each character is, here's a list of what each character is. Okay. 
죽이고 싶은 녀석이 생겼어? 레디아예요 저를 독으로 부르실 건가요? 당신을 위해 춤을 춰드리죠 준비는 끝났다 내 적은 어디 있지? 전투가 시작되었나 보군요 지이십니 취향도 독특하군 그래 내가 바로 완전 무결한 클로저야 내가 잘해낸다면 웃는 얼굴로 칭찬해줘라 어... 저... 말씀이십니까? 뭐냐? 내 뒤에 보아가 되고 싶은 거냐? 나를 고르다니 너도 상당한 글자로 정말... 나라도 괜찮겠어? You can tell what type of character it is by their attacks. Red numbers are physical, blue and numbers are magical, and both red and blue are hybrid. After you know which one is good for your character, discard the other two boxes. Do not open the box until you reach level 70. When you progress through, you will be given a buff called a Closer Device Enhancement. That allows you to wear gear when you're 5 levels below the level requirement to wear one. So if the gear needs you to wear it at level 75, you can use the buff and you'll be able to wear it at level 70. There's also something else which is called Soldier's Antique Equipment. This is acquired through running Arena Boss and David, which is located in Union Division HQ. This can be used as your second temporary trinket set, along with the temporary set that was given to you. You will need to stick with that until you complete the next part which I'm going to mention. Once you've acquired that gear, you'll notice that you will be unlocking PNA when you do Quest and Planar Gate. Use the purple potion that Bona gives you in the beginning and use those PNA strains that it gives by pressing the J key and right clicking on the new PNA strains you've obtained. If you haven't opened the PNA slots, go ahead and open them when you can. If you want to know more about PNA, go ahead and check out the Gearing Up Part 2 video where I mentioned all about PNA. Gear after the time set. Now, what exactly do you do after acquire, you know, the gear and PNA sets? Well, if you haven't done a certain planar gate quest, you need to do it because you'll eventually unlock an area named Purification Op Center. Once you unlock it, you must do the first quest. In order to complete it, you need to go to the first dungeon in purification and maybe do a boss or two. You'll be able to acquire a weapon that lets you upgrade a sample weapon that is given to you after completing the quest. Once that's done, they will hand you a weapon that you will need with a purification weapon. It gives you just the right type that you need. Once that's acquired, you need to focus on running those same dungeons and make sure to run the bosses if you can. If you're 200k TCP lower than the requirement, you should still be fine. Once that's done, you need to make sure you drop one of the items that is shown in the list under each boss. Once you do, make sure to get the same type but named differently. Like for example, you see under the Tindalos boss, there is something called a list of main items that can be produced or obtained. And you see the weapon, two modules, and trinkets that can be made or dropped. As you may know, you should have the weapon already after completing the first quest I mentioned earlier. Now what you need to focus on are the modules that are listed right there. Those three trinkets next to it are the only acquired through crafting. Unfortunately, you're going to need a lot of credits to obtain each of them. Be sure to take your time as you progress through. Now what if you don't know what modules you're supposed to obtain? Well, as I said earlier, you need to look at the bottom row when pressing on either Tindalos or Harpus boss. You can drop either the two modules from either Tindalos or Harpus. They're both good, but the only difference is, is the difference in skill enhancement. If you know what skills are good for your character, then go for it. But if you don't know, I suggest looking at the skills that are shown for each and see which one is better for you. Once you've obtained your weapon and your two modules, you're actually going to need to learn transcending. Now I'm sure when you completed the quest after they gave you a weapon to transcend, you somewhat know a glimpse of what you need to do, but if you still don't understand about transcending, basically transcending is something that can level up your gear. You can transcend your weapon and two modules that you will obtain. In order to transcend, 
You need to go to the crafting machine and there will be materials that have certain types like some for transcending weapons, which are purple, some for modules, which are blue, and amplifiers, which are green. In order to transcend amplifiers though, you need to get to do a dungeon called Contamination Hell, or Overflow as well. You need to get enough of the material of something called Victorious Pollution Phase. You won't need it for the first three amplifier materials, but you will need it for the fourth and the fifth one. Hunter's Knight. Now this one is really simple, that doesn't really require transcending and such. Here, you need to get three trinkets that are going to replace your David and Arena trinkets that I mentioned last time. You're going to need to run Wolfgang and Hoffman bosses. Why? Well, basically, you're going to need to go to the crafting machine and select Special Epic Gear tab, and you will see three trinkets here that will need to be crafted. Once you click on one of them, it will show you this, which is what you need for it. You'll need a certain amount of bugs, credits, materials, even reanimators like I mentioned in the beginning. Reanimators can be obtained in those bosses and as well as dungeons, quests as well, in Hunter's Night. Where the Hunter's Night bosses are, you can see the dungeon on the top left corners which is called Training Program. That training program can give you lots of reanimators that can be helpful to craft for those trinkets that you will need. Also, if you notice those two bosses in Wolfgang and Hoffman, there are two types which is Battle Program Wolfgang and Overclocked Version. The difference with these two for Wolfgang is the regular version is easier which requires 850k total combat power and for Overclock 1.8 total combat power. As for Hoffman, it's slightly harder. Hoffman in regular version requires 1.1 million total combat power and as for Overclock, it requires you to have 2.2 million combat power. Now, not only is it Overclock harder than the other, but it has one extra phase in the end, and it also drops an extra bug per run, while in the regular, it only drops two or three. You need to craft this gear, and once you've done that, your gear should look something like this. Triggers. If you're wondering what three gear pieces are in the middle, where it says off, those are triggers that are basically used to boost up in the dungeon. To acquire it, you need to do side quests in Hunter's Night called Another Nightmare Unexpected Subject. Now I noticed a lot of people who cannot find the quest. The quest is a green quest, meaning it's a side quest, located in Hunter's Night which is taken to Jerry Kim which gives you the mission after completing chapter 1 of Hunter's Night for Blacklands or Wolf Dogs. Or right after getting into Hunter's Night for Wild Hunter Team. As for Radis, it's really simple. You wouldn't even need to do a dungeon quest to acquire triggers for this team. That's it for now. The gear should look like this from what I just showed you, and the next part of the video will actually be a tricky one, which will end up eventually replacing your Hunter's Knight trinkets, and we will also be talking about Beezlebub weapons and modules that will be obtained in reverse theater. I hope this helps you, and I have the stamps listed in the description so you can look back and see what exactly you need to do. Thanks so much for watching, and I wish you good luck on your journey. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. Have a wonderful weekend!